Well, check this out. About, oh, I don't know, two and a half years of work. Not full-time. I've been working a full-time job, too. I work in games. Uh, but this is indie dev, and man, I gotta say, I think it's harder. Sometimes. When you're trying to do all the programming, all the art. Anyway, I'm excited to show you guys this. Uh, there's a lot going on here. This is a... I don't know what it is. Like I said, it's root. It's a survival game. But... There's more to it than, you know, just like most survival games than just survival. I'm trying to I'm trying to implement a story and maybe you guys could help me with the story, right? I'm thinking I got a bunch of ideas in my head and I was I just kind of need an audience to bounce those ideas off with. So I know, you know, where I'm going. But I'm going to show you a little bit about this game and like how it was made. I want to talk to you guys about that. And uh, it's all in Unreal Engine, so I want to show you all the... Because I'm using a lot of the new technologies that everybody's talking about. You know, Nanite. I don't have Lumen on at the moment, uh, but there is Nanite. I'm, um, but th see, there's, this is the kind of stuff I want to talk to you about. Like, there's a secret there to get all of these trees rendered. Like, you can't just rely on a technology like Nanite because, like, you know, these trees... I don't know if they're like a million polys, but they're a lot. Um, I have some big rocks hanging around. But anyway, I don't want to get too far into the weeds. I, there's so much to say. I don't even know where to start. Like, I don't even know what to start talking about. I better give my guy a little drink of water first. Uh, so I want to show you like a few hooks of the game and then maybe give you some ideas of where I'm trying to go with it. And then if I can explain the mechanics, I'm going to give like a broad overview of all the systems that are there. Okay, so there is there is a building system. We we have that. We have a crafting system. Um, there is AI that's going to be multiplayer. Now check out here. I just want to stop for a second. Like check out these trees, man. Look at that. That's great. You know, and all this stuff is interactable. You know, you see the movement. We're working on that. So we got like these different like. They're like little mini forests inside. Like I wanted these plain grass areas. I want to talk about all the different assets I used and how I put them together. Um, like, and I, cause I went through so many assets. There are things that are, there are assets in the marketplace that are really good. There's ones in there that are really bad. There's ones that are good if you know how to take out all of the gobbledygook from them, you know? But this is more than just an asset flip. In fact, only the last couple months have been putting together what you're seeing. Most of the time, probably two years of the work has been getting all the code in that allows all the damage systems, the respawn systems, the stuff I'm not even showing, all the inventory, how it all works. I'm, a, I'm lost in my own game. Like, not only, not only is it a new game, but I'm like lost in it. Obviously, I don't have them in my NPCs. I already have that system made. Um, I don't have them in yet because I just built this specific map. So I haven't added them in. And I'm, I'm kind of like working through, you know, how the NPC systems are going to work in this world. I got a building system, crafting system, health system, lots of systems. Let's start with just some base building. So just like most games, I can place floors. I can craft things like doors, walls, stairs, corners to walls, ceilings. I'm going to craft a bed and a good old craft desk. Sorry, tech desk. Put some walls up. Got a good old working automatic door. Got these unique corner pieces. I think they're kind of cool. Got skylights, regular old ceiling pieces. He's starting to come together. Got a stairway to bring myself into the house here. Here's the exterior. Some nice windows. A little view of the mountain there. All right. All of this uh, building has worked up an appetite, so I better uh, take care of that. 
build myself a tech desk. It'll right be here by the window so I can see my mountain. Let's craft a food processor so I can cook some of this food I got. All right, I'll place it over here in the corner. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use this thing and put my raw meat in there. And then transfer in some wood. All right, turn it on. I'll be cooking some meat. Same with some water here. Can I have some water? Throw that in there. Transfer in some wood. There, all right. Myself a bed. That way if I die, I can respawn right there. All right, I got myself some cooked meat, got dinner. And I got something to drink. Nice. Anyway, I left, I stopped doing, so I stopped doing YouTube like two years ago. And when I was doing YouTube, I was doing, um, I was doing a lot of tutorial videos. And I want to do that here. Like I still want to do tutorials, but they're going to be higher level. Like we're going to talk about like how I place, like, like what I, what strategy I use to get as many trees as I do have in here. And it's not as simple as just turning on Nanite. There was a lot more to it than that. And like what assets I use, like I'm going to talk about like those sorts of things, like, like the, the, the tough spots I got stuck in before in my tutorials, I was doing stuff like, you know, do this, then do this, then do that, do this. And it was really tedious. And I don't know how many times I, I sat down and I was like, okay, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to start doing these tutorials again. And every time I sat down, like I just lost motivation. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do it because it felt too much like actual work. Right. And so I made a decision. I was like, I gotta, ha I gotta have a motivation. So what I'll do, I will get back on YouTube. I'm going to, I'm just going to start covering the making of this game. And we're going to talk about the challenges and all the things that I face. And then for those people that want these really nitty gritty, um, detailed like do this then do this you know hours long videos i'm going to host that on udemy and i have a brand new course right now um it's it's a capture the flag game um but it's multiplayer and it's the same code concepts that i use in that game are applied here so if you're liking like what you're seeing these mechanics this sort of thing then that's gonna that's gonna get you on your way. And so I'm doing I'm doing a couple stages, right? I'm gonna do so the first course is gonna be blueprint and it's gonna be the te technical designer course. And so it's gonna be like if you you know you're familiar with moving around the editor, maybe you did some of my old courses before, which are very outdated by now. Um and you're like, I I wanna do something that uh takes me to the next level. Um, but, and, and here's the catch here. It doesn't just take you to the next level. It's, it, I do it as if it was work. Like when, what I mean by work, like, like as you work at a studio, like I notice a lot of guys are indie developers and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that, but you have to format your code and your blueprint a lot differently if you're working in a professional studio. And so I'm kind of like trying to get that person ready to work in a studio. So like when you're done with the course, then if, if you, uh, like on the first day of your job, you could be committing code because there's a thing called code review that you go through. You can't just submit code in most places, especially in a higher studio that has a lot of staff. Um, you, you submit it and they're going to be like, you know, and, and if it's your first, you know, your first year or whatever, you're going to get a lot of corrections and there's going to be a, a steep learning curve and it's intimidating and some guys don't make it and, you know, and that's never good. And, and, and I was like, man, if I could just get people a jump start. Uh, that would be great. And so that's what that course is. The other, I'm doing another course and it's, a, it's all C++. And that course is meant for the experienced technical designer. Like, you know, you're really confident in Blueprint. You're feeling really good, but you're ready for the next challenge. You want to jump into the C++ stuff. That's what uh, that course is for you. And with that course... Uh, we're, we're doing the same game. So that way you could take both court, you could do blueprint and then you could go right into the C plus plus and learn it all. And I think the blueprint one is a little over eight hours so far. It's just started. And then the, um, C plus plus one, I don't even know yet. I haven't created it all the way. I'm going to guess that's going to probably run 12 hours. I'm not sure. It just depends. 
So anyway, that's where the nitty gritty um, coding tutorials are going to live now. They're going to go there. Um, that way I can be motivated to continue to do them if they're successful. If not, we'll just keep doing this sort of stuff and I'll just be do doing more like dev logs and, and showing you guys a lot of the secrets that it took me forever to figure out. And there's a lot of stuff that you just need and I, you just need to spark inspiration on how to get around a hurdle. Like, <clears throat> like let's say you're facing a, a bug, you know, or like, okay, here, here's a good one. Like these mountains, do you know how hard it is to just like make a mountain that looks like this, that actually has collisions. So most of the mountains you buy on the marketplace are, um, they have no collision at all. Right. And so then you're like, well, I need a mountain and I need it to have collision because I actually want to play on it. It's not a distant mountain, so I need it to be detailed. You know, it's hard to find those things. And so then you're left with, okay, I'll just sculpt it. And it's like, well, the built-in sculpting tools kind of suck for building these really detailed, uh, you know, mountains, stuff like that. So how do I solve that? And I have a pretty good solution for you there. And we're going to, I'll probably do a whole video just on how I did these mountains and what I used and what I, and what doesn't work, what does work. Um, Another thing I want to talk about are like these trees, the placement of these trees, like what I used. I used PCG, but I'm going to get into why. And oh, yeah. And like, how does how does the map uh, decide like when we're in one of these forests and when we're not? So I don't have to manually go through and place them or I don't have to manually place these rocks. And how do I prevent trees and rocks from overlapping and all these all these little things that I didn't have any idea of. And I had to learn it all on my own. So I was like, oh, I'll do videos on that, explaining people just to get them up and going, you know, just to, just to, just to get them inspired to try the method. Maybe I did, and maybe they'll even have a better way. I didn't know if you noticed, but, um, I'm only running a 3080 and I got all this detailed stuff and I'm, I'm, I'm hitting 60 frames. No, no problem. Now I am only on a 1080 resolution right here, but you know, I'm running OBS. Um, and this thing is just chugging along just fine. I could, turn off virtual let's see v-sync so let's try that look at that in around 80 70 depends on what i'm looking at right but yeah it's up in the 70s no problem and the foliage is really the the killer the trees are the real demanding thing and these trees are pretty darn dense like there's a lot of trees here and we're still hitting that see a little you can tell how much V-Sync helps, like that screen tearing, because um, now I'm seeing it all over the place. But I just wanted to unlock it to show you, like, we're doing pretty good. Now, we head into these trees, and we're still still hitting right at 60. Like, we're over it a little bit. I saw it dip down a little bit once in a while when we get really dense. But we got this really thick grass, interactive and everything, and we're still solid in those 60s. Look at that. So I'm going to talk about performance, uh, what it takes to get stuff. Here, let me, let me show you this. Like, to get stuff that's this detailed, you're still hitting 60 frames. I'm going to talk about the, some of the myths people that there are about, you know, Nanite. Like everybody thinks, oh, you turn that on, it's going to be fine. No, that is not the case. That is not the case at all. It's good for some things. It's terrible for others. Um, you know, it is not a magic button that you click on and you get these frames, not even close. I'm going to talk about shadows, I'm going to talk about virtual shadows. But anyway, that's it for now. Uh, let me know what you think. Like, comment, and subscribe.